Right, this could go really terribly wrong. Safety first. My name's Matt Estley and I'm a professionally trained furniture maker here in the UK. And by my best estimations, it seems the world is going quite frankly mental. And so in response to it all, I've decided to pack it all in and live off grid in a van. In the last video, you joined me in my hunt looking for a new home, eventually landing on this extra long wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter. And so in this one, we're gonna begin stripping it out, cleaning it and fitting some basic installations for my new forever home. Now part of the allure of this van was the massive loading ramp fitted in the back, which I had a suspicion was worth a fair bit of money. I just didn't know how much and how easy it would be to remove. So I think I've got as many tools as a surgeon does here and I've got no idea how I'm gonna take this thing off. The buyer is coming tomorrow, so um, I've got to figure it out somehow. <laughs> This is one thing I completely forgot I had until last night, a half inch socket driver, that should help. Now it may not look like much, but this was probably one of the hardest day's work I've ever yeah, done. Yeah, have it, have it. Ah! Not only was every single bolt rusted and seized, but many were in extremely awkward positions that required every method under the sun to remove. Yes, yes! With only 30 minutes remaining before the buyer was due to arrive, filming became a second priority and I missed the moment I got the ramp into this position. Presentable, right? But for health and safety recording purposes, it was probably in my best interest to leave that bit out. It was very dodgy. The next step was to remove the internal ply lining to see what awaited me underneath. Rust, if left untreated, can be a silent killer in vehicles and it was pretty clear to me that the fixing holes for the ramp would have allowed a fair amount of water ingress, so I came in expecting the worst. I began with the walls, which came off with very little complaint. However, here I was faced with the first signs of rust around some of the fixing points, but most notably the wheel arch, which really didn't look good. In an effort to follow the rust, next I wanted to remove the floor, but this was restricted by the bulkhead which meant this had to be removed first. This wasn't much of an issue though, as my interior design required the bulkhead to be removed anyway. In the extended build series on my second channel, you'll see the nightmare I had trying to remove the bulkhead and floor, but for now, with the power of editing, let's just make this look nice and easy. Later in the build, you'll see I'm going to be replacing this floor with fresh, clean plywood, and so instead of disposing of the old one, I decided to keep it to be used as a template. Now the floor was removed, I could confirm that the holes for the ramp had in fact allowed a lot of water ingress and had created some very large patches of rust. Now rust can spread like wildfire if left untreated and so it's not worth taking any chances, especially as it's going to be covered up indefinitely and won't be noticeable until it's too late. For this reason I'm going overkill and utilising a five step approach in attacking and preventing this stuff. The first step was to brush away as much of the surface rust as possible. Having given myself a few options to work with, I quickly settled on the crimped wire brush. Of course, I'll pop a link to this and everything else I'm going to be using for this stage in the description below. I then followed that up with, I, th I think it's called Q-Rust, Q-Rust, I don't really know, a magical concoction that somehow turns rust into an obsidian-like colour and prevents it from spreading any further. It's actually referred to as a rust stabiliser. This was perfect for areas that the wire brush couldn't reach, particularly the corners around the wheel arch. The next step was Red Oxide Primer, which is a fast-drying anti-corrosion primer which would be used to cover the stabilised areas and to give the final layer of paint something to bind to. We definitely went overkill with this as by the end of it the van looked a little bit like Patrick Bateman's apartment. Next I began sealing the holes in the floor using a steel reinforced epoxy putty. Now really this should have been carried out earlier in the process as this putty is best used on raw metal but the product delivery was delayed and I decided to press on with other steps in the meantime. So to remedy this it simply required brushing back some of the paint around the holes, moulding the steel reinforced putty into position and waiting for it to dry. Finally I applied Hammerite metal paint. This stuff has a primer and rust inhibitor built into it, so it doesn't necessarily need a base such as red oxide paint, but the advantage of the glaringly obvious red paint was that it was very easy to see what areas required attention and what areas I had missed. With the van interior looking shiny and new, next I turned my attention to work on the exterior to further waterproof and rustproof the van. 
The first step was to utilize underbody car spray. This not only prevents weathering in high impact areas, but also has a rust inhibitor that can treat and prevent rust. Some people use this under the entire chassis, but I personally chose to only use it in the areas I had treated from above, such as the filled ramp holes and the wheel arches. As you can see, I've removed the trim from the side of the van to make this job a little cleaner, but also because the trim itself includes one of the biggest design flaws in Mercedes Sprinter's vans that still needed to be addressed. That's, that's wet. So it's very obvious that these clips allow in water. Mercedes clearly knows about this, as not only is the area sealed with wax oil, but there's both a gutter and drainage holes below. But despite all this, given the area is going to be filled with insulation that I would prefer to stay dry, these needed to be sealed. I began by cleaning the dirt and grease off each individual clip. I hate washing up. Then once clean, I reinserted them into the trim and applied a thin bead of silicon around them. Once this was done, I then went back and sprayed a fresh coat of wax oil over the guttering to be sure it was fully sealed, then got underneath the van to ensure the drainage holes were clear, just in case water somehow found its way in. With the van now factory reset cosmetically, I wanted to bookend either end of the internal space with both the bed and the swivel seats, which would make designing the area in between a little more accurate and hopefully predictable. Once these were installed, they turned out to be incredibly high quality and I'm very impressed with them. If you want to know more about these, check out my installation tutorial in the description below. I was in fact so impressed by these swivel mechanisms that I ended up ordering an extra set for the driver's seat as well. This added a few extra complications such as having to lower the handbrake and such, but other than that, it was a very easy installation. But yeah, this sliding mechanism is great because I'm looking at getting a bench in front of me here. So that could actually double up as a footrest now while having a fully adjusted We'll see. With one end of the van figured out, next I wanted to turn my attention to the bed so I could really dial in the space between that and the front seat. Now this is going to be made primarily out of these aluminium extrusions which will make up the frame. It's going to be bolted to the wall using these aluminium L sections. It's about six millimeter thick, three inches by two inches. And then we've got a bunch of hardware in the box here to connect the aluminium extrusion to itself and also to this. And um, I had it planned out at some point. I can't, I can't remember exactly what I can. Now you'll have to forgive me for this, but halfway through installation of the bed, a delivery showed up. I don't know where I'm gonna fit this. This consisted of skylights and windows, and with winter fast approaching, I really had to prioritize getting these fit before the rain started falling. But we'll be doing that in the next episode so be sure to stick around until then as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to press the like button subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget if you want to see this series in more depth be sure to follow the series i've got running parallel to this on my second channel links to everything is in the description below i'd love to see some of